Micah chapter 4. Now, as we begin this next segment, chapters 4 and 5 uh, point to us of the glorious restoration. Restoration of God's people, of the land, and so on. So, if you follow the outline up there, the kingdom restored, which is the theme of this section, the Lord's house restored, the nations restored, peace restored, and so on and so forth. So we go through it one by one. And this will promise, and it came to pass in the near term and also in the in the long term. Long term yet to be. Okay, verse 1. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow to it. Now, this verse, does it sound familiar? Have you read it somewhere before? We have, right? This is the promise of the future. After the great tribulation, then Jesus shall come. And we have that 1,000 millennial years with Jesus before we all enter into eternity. And during the millennium, millennium, you will find that the world, all nations of the world, will turn to God through the nation of Israel. And they will go to Zion. And they will go to Jerusalem. And they will go up to the mountain. Why? Who is there? Jesus. Okay. Now that has been God's intention all along from the beginning that He wanted to have the world turn to Him to worship Him through the nation Israel. But Israel disobeyed, rejected Him. And so, here comes the church. And that's where we can come in. And then, Meanwhile, the people of Israel, they turn inwards instead of outwards. But Jesus' command to us is, turn outward, go, go into the world. So we went, we are still going, and through this ministry of the church, we will eventually uh, participate, do our part in, in, in driving people to God. Eventually, still, after all this, the church is taken up, and then Israel will be God's instrument. You read all this in Revelation. God uses the weaknesses, the, uh, the 12,000 from each tribe and so on. He's using them in the, in the book of Revelation to be His weaknesses. And in that tribulation period, the greatest evangelism will take place there. Now you think, oh, Billy Graham, you think uh, Rehab Bonke, one million souls. But in the tribulation, it will be even greater. And God will use the nation of Israel to turn people to God. And then after the Antichrist is over and so on, and then Jesus' second coming, and then in the millennium, then you will find, hey, now the whole world will be ascending, will be going up to Jerusalem. And this is what we are looking at. But anyway, just now I was saying, uh, where else do you read this? If you remember, it was in Isaiah chapter 2. You will also read this in Zechariah chapter 14. But let's just do Isaiah chapter 2. Verse, let's start with 1. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and it shall be lifted up above the hills 
and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his way, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and so on. But reading this, you know, in the future, the HQ, the HQ, God's HQ, the New Kingdom's HQ, is where? Jerusalem. And we are all going up the whole world. But the church, remember the church, you and I, we will be, what is the word? Not resurrected. Raptured. Okay. So, and also in Zechariah and so on. So, this promise repeated in the Bible surely shall come to pass. That is the promise of God. And we all look forward to the day. And I want to show you, you know, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. He actually repeated a bit of Daniel's uh, prophecy. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, verse 34. You know, he had the dream. There was this statue and the head of gold, you know, chest of uh, aluminium, then iron, then, uh, was it iron? Okay, anyway, but a big stone will bring this down and then something will be established. Where are we? So, verse 34, As you look, a stone was cut out by no human hand and it struck the image on the feet and iron, uh, on the feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. So this structure, image, or the statue was broken. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, not aluminium, okay, uh, the bronze, the silver, the gold. So from the bottom to the top, iron and clay, and then the bronze, the silver, and then the gold, all together were broken in pieces and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became what? A great mountain and filled the whole earth. Finally, I mean all this gold, silver, brass, iron and so on, all this were the kingdoms of the earth, right? The Babylonians, the Middle Persians, the, the Greeks, the, and so on, the Romans. But these kingdoms will be destroyed and the kingdom of Christ shall be established. And that will be the great mountain that filled the whole earth. It is consistent. God spoke the same message and gave the same message to his prophets. And here we find again. Micah chapter 4 verse 1. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. And the, the peoples shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion, the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse 3. He shall judge between many peoples. So, he of course is Jesus. He shall judge between many peoples. You know, people. Peoples, that means referring to nations, all the nations of the world. And rebuke strong nations afar off. They shall beat their swords into plowsheds 
and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Eh, have you read this verse before? Also in Isaiah, right? Also in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not live up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So you know what some historians say? Micah is a copycat. <laughs> Micah committed plagiarism. That means uh, copying things without copyright. How can you say this? This is the word of God. They were contemporaries. But Isaiah is more senior. And probably, probably uh, Micah learned from him. He's a protege of Isaiah and so on. But there was no no uh, thing, no effort of his own part because the Bible tells us every word comes from the inspiration of God. You follow me? God inspired these prophets to write as they were led by the Holy Spirit. And so the source is not Isaiah. The source is God. So, not copycat. This is copyrighted. Okay? <laughs> direct from God. So anyway, that's what people do. So, but now, but for now, eh, we still got, oh, Singapore wants to buy the, 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 the next biggest, uh, don't know how many fleets, or a fleet of, don't know how many planes, and buy the next tank, and, and uh, China is building up their military, and US as well. But what about now? Should we say, eh, no, uh, we should start, you know, turning our our swords uh, into plowshare, you know, all the all the weapons in, in, in army camps in Singapore, all melt them down. <coughs> what shall we do? Luke chapter eleven, verse twenty one. These are the words of Jesus. Luke 11 verse 21, When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are safe. When a strong man fully armed guards his own place, his goods are safe. Now, if you don't guard, people will come and take, right? But this person is already a strong man. Strong man no need one. You will see you who are scared. Better don't go past his house. But still they come. So if a strong man needs to guard his house, what about the not so strong man or woman? And to be fully guarded, fully armed, that means surely you got some weapons. And in this world that we're living in, surely we know there are good and there are evil. There are the haves and those who are have-nots. But there's one more group. I want to have what you have. I come and take. And they'll rob, they'll kill, they steal, and they rob. And these are all agents of the devil. I mean, I'm not just talking about robbing, taking your iPhone and so on. They will take your life. They will invade your nation. And they do crazy things. Jesus said, arm yourself, fully arm, guards his own palace. Because we are not living in a perfect world yet. But just now, when did they beat their swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks and, and so on? That is during the millennium. After the Great Tribulation. After the Antichrist has been kicked out, evicted from this place and thrown into the lake of fire. You follow me? No? At that point in time, don't need because peace is here. And who is peace? Jesus. He said, I give you peace. So right now they are wasting their time at United Nations, uh, media, meet there, you know, try and come out with peace because somebody will break the, the treaty. The only peace we will have 
is from Jesus and when he comes, there will be peace. By then, you don't need the weapons. But now, we need the weapons to God. So, these people who, there are people who every year when it comes to NS time, instead of going to the army barracks, they go into the army jail. <laughs> and these are the people who say, no, my religion say cannot carry weapons. These are the Seventh-day Adventists, right? Jehovah Witness. God is peace. Really. Somebody draw, brought a ship and put into our river between the north and the south, the causeway there. Friendly, man? More unfriendly. Yeah. So, you, you can't live in that thing and, and take the word out of context and say, no, 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 no I will not carry weapons. Hey, how did Joshua and his army go into the promised land and take the promised land? You mean they just walk in and then the, the Canaanites, this work, a great couple, please take as much as you take whatever you want. Uh, we are packing, we are leaving soon. <laughs> no, they will fight you. But you are to possess what the Lord has given to you. And with what? With weapons. So, we need weapons. We need to be armed. We need to be guarded, even at this time. You try. You see, uh, at night, don't lock the gate. Don't do nothing. <laughs> la, then you'll come tomorrow. La, no. Anyway, it's going to open tomorrow. Might as well leave it open tonight. <coughs> but in the years, we have people who come and they have stolen, you know, come in, take our projector, take don't know what else. They are. So, it is only prudent that you lock up and be guarded. So, we got CCTV, we got whatever. Okay, I grumbled enough. So, let's go on. Verse 4. <laughs> but you get what I mean? Yeah, so, be guarded. That's wisdom. Verse 4. But everyone, eventually is future, but everyone shall sit under his vine and his fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. Now, this may not mean a lot to you. Who wants to go and sit under the totona tree? Hot, ah, mosquito. Sit under the fig tree, vine. Of course, i rather sit in acorn. Acorn. So far, leather made from Italy. <laughs> but those days, those days, to be able to sit under your own vine, that means your own vine, your own tree, it is prosperity. The poor doesn't have, but from the vine you have the fruit, the fruit you have the wine, the grape, right, the wine, and that is prosperity. And under his fig tree, fig tree, you go to Israel, what do you want? You eat, you buy, fix. So it speaks of prosperity. And no one shall make them afraid. You know why? No more enemies, no more threat. You just sit there and relax and watch the world go by. But is it happening today? No. You go to Israel, you see, they are always alert. Every day they got arrows flying from the enemies, they have uh, bombs and all those small bombs, uh, they come and irritate them. Any louder warning, they will run into all these uh, bomb shelters. Can they sit there and no one shall make them afraid? No, not yet. But in the future, when Jesus shall come, they will. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. So this is still His promise. Verse 5, for all people walk each in the name of his God. But we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So Micah is saying, look, the people of the world, they are idolatrous. They walk in the name of their gods. But we, we, the people of Israel, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever and ever. In that day, millennium, in the future, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame, I will gather the outcasts, and those whom I have afflicted. I will make the lame a remnant, 
and the outcast a strong nation, so the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now even forever. Because the people of Israel, until today, they are still a persecuted people. You follow me? There are some <coughs> nations who will not accept Israel. Israel likes to enter. They will not even play a football game with Israel. And Israel always had problem participating in the Olympics. <coughs> the discrimination is bad. So, God said, in the future, I will assemble the lame, the outcasts, those who have been discriminated. And those whom I have afflicted, God also punish His own people. So after He has chastised them, He will bring them back. And that is what His covenant. He is the faithful God who keeps His covenant. His covenant that He made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. So all the exiles will all be regathered, will be restored, and he said, I will make the lame a remnant and the outcast a strong nation. A strong nation. Hey, but what about those who are the rich and those who are the leaders and those who are the whatever? But God said, No. I will make the lame a remnant, the outcast a strong nation. Because the leaders, the political and the spiritual leaders, they have done a great injustice to God and to the people of Israel. God will gather. He has not forgotten the lame and the outcast. He will make them a remnant. So, the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from now on, even forever. And you, and you, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, to you it sh no, to you shall it come, even the former dominion shall come, the kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. So, after addressing the people, the ordinary people, the lame and the outcast, now he said, to who? The tower of the flock. Who is this tower or what is this tower? Scholars said that uh, could be directed to Jerusalem. So direct, okay, what about Jerusalem? What's going to happen to Jerusalem? But some also said that it could be pointing to David. Pointing to David, that means eventually pointing to Jesus. So we read, it is in the same, it, it, it is not wrong. Either one is, is correct, okay? And you, O tower of the flock, so if you can read this, or, and you, Jerusalem, or you, David. David means pointing, because in Old Testament, David, and then pointing all the way to Jesus. And you, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. To Jerusalem, Jesus, you are the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Daughter of Zion referring to the nation of, uh, of Israel. <coughs> to you shall it come. So they will all come to Jerusalem. They will all come to Jesus. Even the former dominion shall come. Even the former dominion. Dominion that means dominate you, right? So those people who used to dominate you, dominate Israel, those who used to bully you, those who used to be your captors, you are their captives. All this are past. They are former dominion, no more present. They are not dominating you now. Even the former dominion, your former enemies shall come. The kingdom of the daughter of Jerusalem. Verse 9. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in your midst? Has your counsellor perished? For pangs have seized you like a woman in labour. So, meanwhile, that is the promise, but meanwhile, the people are crying. 
the leaders are crying because who enjoys retribution? Who enjoys punishment? But this was their own fault because they asked for it. So God said, in your misery, God said, now why do you cry aloud? Okay, okay, I cry softly. <laughs> no, okay. So why do you cry? Is there no king in your midst? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got Jehoi Akim, got Jehoi Achin, <laughs> got Zedekiah. You're also reliant on the on your king, a small king, right? You're also dependent and so reliant on your king. Go, go and turn to your king. That's what God is saying. But you know, their kings have been ineffective because they themselves are corrupt. So is there no king in your midst? Has your counselor perished? Counselor to the king. There are people who are wise men, right? Giving advice to the king. Hey, eh? uh, Nebuchadnezzar also surrounded himself with wise men. But of the whole lot, uh, only Daniel and his three friends were wise counselors. The rest were not. They were saying sweet things to the king of Babylon. So has your counselor perished? Yeah, died. And for pangs have seized you like a woman in labor. Well, I've never gone through labor. So, but I can tell it's quite painful. Yeah, it should be, it should be. So pangs have seized you like a woman in labor, but be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. So in other words, God is allowing them to go through some pain. So be in pain and labor. Work, work, work to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Like a woman in birth pangs, for now you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. There you shall be preserved, there the Lord will, shall, will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. Do you know, this is another amazing prophecy. Now, it's not very, not another. It's the same prophecy I was telling you about just now. Mm. This was said more than 100 years before it happened. Mm. Yeah. But right now, if you, if, you were, if you were listening to my car then, uh, hey, uh, sorry, sorry, right now uh, the big superpower up there uh, Assyria. is Assyria. Babylon was nothing yet, you understand? Uh? It's like, I tell you, I tell you, I prophesy. In soon, you will be captured. Singapore will be captured by Laos. Some of you don't don't even know Laos. Have you ever been there? Indochina, a ah, small country, very close. But one day, it cannot be a rubbish. But if you tell me it is uh, up north neighbor or after that immediate neighbor, uh, Thailand. Wow, they are strong. They are maybe 10. Big in numbers, can I believe you. But they are in Laos also strong. But it is. Assyria is before us. Yeah, but you tell us Babylon. But it came to pass. You shall go forth from the city. But this is our Jerusalem. This is our city. God gave to us. But you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field. And God said, and to Babylon you shall go. It's like, to Laos you will go. I've been to Laos. On the secret police to follow you everywhere. They don't want you to preach. <laughs> and to Babylon you shall go, and there you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you. So God is saying, a hope to go, but I will redeem you from the hand of your enemies. God can no go no. Can you just quickly redeem us? No. You will go. So verse 11. Now also many nations have gathered against you who say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon <coughs> Zion. And this was during the tribulation. Even now, even now, there are many eyes looking at Israel. Unfriendly eyes. But in the tribulation, the Antichrist leading the charge will be totally against Israel. Now many nations have gathered against you who say, let her be defiled, desecrated, 
and let her, our eye look upon Zion. But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand His counsel. That means they do not know the plans of God. Eventually, the plan of God is very simple. Two words. God wins. You understand? But they don't understand. Do they not know? I am sure by now they know, you know, with scriptures and all those running around Google and so on. But they want to just invade Israel. For he will gather them like sheaves to the threshing floor. He will gather the enemies of Israel to be threshed like sheaves. So it is judgment for the nations that are surrounding Israel. Verse 13, But for Israel, arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. I will make your horn iron, and I will make your hoofs bronze, and shall beat in pieces many peoples. I will consecrate their gain to the Lord, and their substance to the whole of the to the Lord of the whole earth. And this is a turnaround. Arise and trash. Not trash Zion. Calling Zion. Stand up and now you go and trash the enemies. Because God has scattered them. Arise and not be trash, but arise and trash. So now the pursuit will be the pursuer. Yeah, the one who has been aggravated shall be aggravating. So, go. And God said, I will make your horn iron. I will make your horn iron. Horn is a picture of strength, right? It's a picture of power. And horn iron, that means it is going to be very tough. That means those nations gathered uh, like trash. I mean, to be trash like sheep. That means they are powerless. Uh, they, they cannot overcome. They will be definitely destroyed. And you are using horn. Iron horn. And I will make your hooves bronze. Animal hooves uh, uh, are quite tough. But to make it even harder, bronze will be the material. Just like horses, uh, you know, they run, they put those hooves so they can run on, on tougher terrain. And you will beat in pieces many peoples. Oh. Cantonese is quite the more. Yeah? <laughs> beat in many pieces. And I will consecrate their gain to the Lord. And their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. Means all these nations, whatever riches and wealth and so on, all we take, no, all for the Lord, you understand? I will consecrate their gain to the Lord and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. And that is chapter 4.